I always, from Marcus Plenty, I always felt like U.S. history exaggerates its role, role in World War II. Like the kid who steals your goal playing soccer and claims to be the MVP. Well, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, if there's one name uh, you should take down from me, it is Norman Davies, D-A-V-E-V-I-E-S, D-A-V, yeah, Norman Davies. He is a British historian at Queen's College in Cambridge, and he has written a great book about the Great World War, uh, in which he dispels quite a few myths. Now, if you have read uh, Churchill's uh, account, even the abbreviated accounts that you can find um, of uh, the Second World War, you will find that uh, Churchill equates uh, victories in the uh, North African front against Rommel. He equates those with uh, victories in uh, Stalingrad. Um, if you will give me some time, I can actually find some stats. Um, so, for example, um, Norman Davis, uh, there. So, the United States' role in the Second World War uh, started before the entry in '41. Uh, by giving a monetary aid and building the, uh, the so-called liberty ships and uh, using them to send merchandise uh, to the United uh, to UK and uh, to the Soviet Union, and it has normally been uh, held that even though the Soviet Union did all the fighting uh, during the Second World War, or most of it, the lion's share of it, uh, at least in the European operation of theatre. Um, it has always been held that in '41, uh, the the Soviet Union would have completely collapsed if it had not been for uh, the foreign aid from uh, the United States and the UK. But Norman Davis uh, shows that um, the equipment sent to Russia at this time were small arms and it was clothing. Uh, the lion's share, and that whatever was sent in the ways of other things were a drop in the bucket compared to what both the uh, the USSR and uh, Germany produced. So he very much uh, takes down the assertion that um, uh, that the United States kept Russia in the war. Norman Davis tries to do a measure of how many resources as uh, in man hours, in uh, personnel, was invested in uh, different areas. So he does this by stating, okay, so one person serving one month is one man month. And then he uh, simply starts to calculate how many people were active service for how many months on uh, behalf of which countries. Uh, and then he starts totaling them. So for example, the, uh, the attack and invasion of Poland in 1931 was 2.56 million man months uh, all combined, meaning that uh, that was the amount of manpower invested there. Not that it took uh, 2.56 million months. Um, that in the uh, war in Finland between Russia and Finland was nine million man months. And when you then look at the Western Front, June of 1944 to May of 1945 there was 16.5 million man months invested personnel, 16 million. That is an incredibly high number compared to Poland, compared to Finland. It's almost twice of Finland. Okay, so the Eastern Front, 1941 to 1945, 406 million man months, 406 million. 
it is not 10 times as much. It is not 20 times as much. It is, yeah. So the, to say that the US have overstated its involvement in the European theater of operations is, to put it mildly, uh, the landing uh, on Normandy, the opening of the Western Front, did as much uh, to uh, affect the outcome of the Second World War as the moon affects your way of thinking. Uh, the gravity of the moon affects your way of thinking. That, that's, I mean, and no, during the full moon, people don't go more crazy than usual. This has been repudiated repeatedly. Uh, but what it did affect was the aftermath of the Second World War. If the United States, the United States likes to, uh, sometimes you hear from people from the United States, this little quip that if it weren't for us, you would all be speaking German. Now that is flat out untrue. If it weren't for the Russians, we would all be speaking German. Now, if it weren't for the United States, we would all be speaking Russian. Now, that would be a fair assessment that in the aftermath of the Second World War, you had great effect in staving off Stalinist Russia, which was, in regards to tyrannies, uh, one of the biggest that has ever existed. Uh, another way of looking at um, at participation in, a, in the war is the amount of killed in action and missing in action uh, that has been reported. So the uh, USSR lost 11 million soldiers. We're not talking civilians here, soldiers. Germany lost three and a half million. Romania, which is rarely mentioned, an ally of Germany, by the way, uh, lost uh, 500,000. Yugoslavia lost 300,000. Italy, an ally of Germany from the start, lost 226,000. The UK lost 144,000. The United States lost 143,000. So that is also a way of showing the participation in the war. So when you look at the Second World War with regards, again, to the European operation, uh, theater of operation, yes, the United States have extremely exaggerated its own role, but that is because propaganda was allowed during the Second World War. The news outlets became propaganda outlets, and these propaganda outlets promoted propaganda as reality and after the war, uh, the war was over no one went out and said oh all of this was propaganda uh, it was lies a lot of it uh, the russians did the most of the fighting no one went out and did that so that means that with our very short uh, forms of memory uh, we forgot uh, what the truth was um, yeah Another way of looking at numbers, uh, this is uh, the justification of carpet bombing Germany, for example, uh, was the, uh, the blitz on, uh, on England. So the blitz on England was from September 1940 to May 1941. And they estimate about 60,000 civilians died. And that is horrible. I mean, that is the firebombing of civilian cities should not be allowed. That is horrible. And watching the imagery of those uh, buildings ablaze during the night and the firefighters desperately trying to quell the fires, and yeah, you know, it's horrible. Now, Dresden, which was at the time proclaimed to be the big intelligence headquarters of the Wehrmacht, which it was not, and which has come forward after the war that no one ever believed it was, but it was propagandized as being uh, intelligence headquarters of uh, the German army. Dresden, in a three-day bombing raid, firebombing raid, 60,000 people died. Now, 
compare that to the blitz against England, which lasted over a year, 60,000 people died. The surface bombing or copper bombing against German cities from 42 to 45 killed an estimated 650,000 people. That's the same number of people, uh, the gypsies, that uh, the concentration camps took out. And people <clears throat> then uh, state, oh, but we were trying to attack uh, industry. But uh, the man nicknamed Bomber Harris, uh, who was in charge of the bombing of the German cities, he, um, he learned surface bombing from his tours in Iraq as a British officer in the, in the Air Force. And he stated that it was too hard to hit factories, so it was much harder to, uh, it was much easier, instead of trying to do precision targeting, which the equipment couldn't really do, it's much easier to just surface bomb uh, entire cities and have the civilians uh, give up hope. And uh, the truth of his statement that it was too hard is borne out by the German uh, BNP, uh, the GDP, sorry. Uh, which uh, steadily increased throughout all years of the war from 100 in 1938 to 124 in 1944, and it didn't decrease until 1945, where it fell to 88. So the industrial production of Germany went merrily on and did not really care about the bombings. Uh, so again, it's matter of perspective. Now, the reason I kept uh, pointing out the uh, European operations, uh, theater of operation, is because in the Pacific War, the United States fought almost alone for four years. The Second World War is always presented as England is attacked, uh, America is reluctant, uh, America is attacked by Japan, America meets with Churchill, they agree that Germany should be the first order of business, and then they start building up, and then uh, they invade Europe, Europe is liberated by America and England, and then they turn their eye to Japan. Huh? Now there's something very wrong with that, because what actually happened was, America was attacked by Japan. America takes the lion's share of its existing resources and commits against Japan and keeps a war going against Japan, a winning war, no less, against Japan, while it at the same time builds up uh, troops and supplies, yes, to do the invasion in Europe, yes. But this was done very slow compared to what could have been done if Japan had been ignored. So you, the United States fought, fought the Pacific War, of course, alongside Australians and other troops from the Commonwealth, including British troops uh, in Asia, but the United States by far committed the most resources and the most personnel. So uh, the story, the United States keeps telling itself about uh, the European operations, uh, theater of operations during the Second World War. They should stop telling. You should stop telling that. And you should stop telling that story that you tell yourself about Europe. You should start telling yourself that about the Pacific War, because there it's actually true. So that was a very long winded uh, answer <laughs> to your questions. Um, Okay. Mm, I'm being asked by Ashley uh, CR, what Norman Davis book are you talking about? He wrote a lot of them. Um, <laughs> he did. Uh, here's the problem. I'm from Denmark and I have read a lot of my books in Danish. So I know the Danish title. I do not know the English title. And I know that it has a specifically different English title. Uh, what I will do is I will make sure to get the uh, British, uh, the English titles of uh, the two books I've mentioned during uh, 
my show today, I will take these and I will uh, I will take these and I will put them in the comment sections of this video. I'll put them in the detail sections of this video, and uh, yes, so I will do those things uh, so that you can find them if you want to find them. Um, and I'm sorry I don't have these uh, uh, at me. I did not expect to be drawn into a discussion on the Second World War.